The 2022 NFL season has come to a close, and on today's edition of the podcast, we're going to take a look at the most successful Sun Devils from the season. Let's hop into it right now on the Locked On Sun Devils podcast. Our Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more effectively by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your 2023 goals. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions will apply. Welcome back, everyone, to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thank you guys for tuning in. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like and subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get an update when we post new content. Stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter at RichieBrads36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. For today's episode of the podcast, we are going to be taking a look at the 2022 NFL season and the most successful Sun Devils that performed throughout the year. There are more than a handful of Sun Devils in the NFL, some of which have made very big impacts for their scene, and some of which are guys you may not even realize are in the NFL right now. But there's a lot of guys to take a look at for the Sun Devils. Some guys that are underachieving. Obviously, the most the most notable name would definitely be Nikhil Harry, who only had one reception this year with the Chicago Bears and has overall just been a total complete bust in the NFL. Here's hoping that he can finally find a way to turn his career around. Another guy I want to mention is Chase Lucas and Darian Butler. Both of those guys did not have major roles in the 2022 season, but they do look like special teams guys and potentially guys who could find a bigger role in 2023. One honorable mention, and then we're going to get started, Eno Benjamin. Eno Benjamin had a really weird year. He was more than quality during his time with the Cardinals. And in that time frame, racked up just shy of 300 rushing yards, I believe, right on 299, and was averaging well over four yards a carry. He was he was very quality during his time there. Scored his first two NFL touchdowns, had a career game against New Orleans where he rushed for 92 yards and one touchdown on seven, or with 7.7 yards per carry, excuse me. But his time came to a very abrupt end when it seemed like he was wanting more of a role in the offense because he still was in this change of pace kind of role with the team. And the team complied in releasing him. He bounced around between the Houston Texans and the New Orleans Saints and ended the year with 313 rushing yards and the aforementioned two touchdowns. Nothing great. But when he did get that opportunity with Arizona, I felt like it was it was noteworthy to talk about like, you know, he, he was kind of a stud that maybe didn't get the recognition that he believed he deserved, or maybe some of us believed he deserved. I don't know why the Cardinals cut him with everything that was going on. Like, I understand like there was obviously differences in opinion and everything, and maybe that was the only decision they could make, but it's still puzzling to me. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and hop into my five most successful Sun Devils from the year. Number five, this one might surprise some people, but Matt Hawk, In case you forgot who Matt Hawk is, Hawk was the punter for Arizona State in the same time frame that Zane Gonzalez was the kicker for Arizona State. We had a very good duo on our special team side of the ball. And Matt Hawk has been quality in the pros. Well, he had one of his better seasons in 2022 with the Indianapolis Colts. He played all 17 games. He punted the ball 70 times, was averaging just shy of 45 yards a punt. Solid, not not great, not Pro Bowl, but more than solid. Where he made up for it is he had just three touchbacks on 70 punts. That's just over 4% of his punts were falling into the end zone, keeping teams uh, at the 20-yard line. He had 28 punts that were inside the 20-yard line. Very, very quality season for a punter. 
again, when you look at the the wide scope of things, he's outside of the top five, sometimes even the top ten in certain stats. He certainly didn't have the most punt yards with just three with just three thousand one hundred and thirty three. But again, it's not like power has ever been his biggest strong suit. He's not a guy who can punt the ball seventy yards down the field. He's just an accurate punter. Clearly, that showed with his ability to pin teams inside the 20-yard line. He, again, didn't give up a lot of touchbacks. There was a handful of attempts on him. There was 26 runbacks by opposing teams, and they only got an average of 7.4 yards per return. You'll take that every day of the week and twice on Sundays. It's, it's not as though Matt Hawk was the best punter in the NFL in 2023. But I definitely wanted to make sure that I gave him a shout out because I feel like not a lot of people even remember Matt Hawk during his days at Arizona State. I feel like he was kind of an unsung hero for the Sun Devils way back when, and that's why he's number five on my list. Going into number four, rookie Rashad White. I thought that White had a pretty solid season in spite of some pretty underwhelming numbers. He had under four yards per carry. He had under six yards per reception. He only scored three touchdowns. But with that being said, the Buccaneers run game as a whole had underachieved throughout the year. Uh, Leonard Fournette looked like a shell of of his former self and looks like the oldest running back that's like 27 years old that I've ever seen in my entire life. Rashad White looked definitively better than him throughout the year, both as a receiver and as a runner. Fournette, 3.5 yards per carry. Rashad White, 3.7 yards per carry. Leonard Fournette did edge him as a receiver with 7.2 yards per reception compared to 5.8. And Fournette obviously had more touchdowns because he was the starter, but it felt like Rashad White was the more effective guy when he was on the field. There's a very good chance that Leonard Fournette ends up walking in free agency. I don't know if Tampa Bay is A, interested in bringing him back, and B, looking to pay him any kind of money that would be more than a veteran minimum right now. With that being said, obviously they'll be in the market for a running back. It's a very rich running back market on free agency, and it's a pretty good draft too. There's guys like B. John Robinson they could take a look at in the first round. There's Jameer Gibbs and Zach Charbonnet and Devin and Devin Aiken from Texas A&M. There's a lot of guys to fancy, but they should be confident going into 2023 with Rashad White as one of their top two backs, if not their number one back. There's a lot that he brings to the table as a runner and as a receiver. We saw it at Arizona State. We saw glimpses of it as a rookie. I think that if he is to be featured a little bit more, I'm not I'm not ready to say this is a thousand yard runner. I'm not ready to say this is a pro bowler, but I don't see a reason why he can't be a more than quality to a good option as a as a starting running back for you. All in all, my thoughts on Rashad White's rookie year. Better than the numbers look, I think, which is why he's number four on my list. I think that there's a chance that he can continue to climb. He was obviously a third round pick for a reason. The Buccaneers believe in him for for their future moving forward. It'll just be a matter of whether or not they make massive additions to their running back room during the offseason, whether or not they sign a guy, whether or not they draft a guy high. We'll wait and see. But until then, he looked very, very quality in the role that he was in. And like I said, I think that Tampa Bay could be in good hands moving forward at the running back spot. As small business, excuse me, as a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on your team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experience to help you achieve those goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post, company, and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and for free. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com 
slash locked on college terms and conditions will apply. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. Make your second listen of the day, the Locked On College Basketball Podcast. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball available on YouTube and wherever you're reading your podcasts. Going into a top three players now. Taking a look at number three guy. Lawrence Guy has been in the league so long that a lot of newer fans may not realize that he played for Arizona State way, way back in the late 2000s and very early 2010s. He's been in the league since 2012. He has carved himself out a very nice niche with the New England Patriots in recent years. He's been with the team for six seasons now. And this year was no difference in the quality performance that he provided. He had 46 tackles, two sacks in his playtime. But again, similar to Rashad White, Lawrence Guy's a guy who kind of goes beyond the numbers. You don't look at Lawrence Guy and expect 10 sacks. You don't look at Lawrence Guy and expect turnovers galore and run stuffs in the backfield, like the tackles for loss. Instead, what you look for is a guy who can help anchor the defensive line and help make the jobs for everyone else around him a little bit easier. If you look at what the Patriots did as a team, you can completely understand that things were made a lot easier for them than they weren't. Looking at their pass rush, they had a whopping 54 sacks this year. They had two guys reach double-digit sacks, including Matt Judon with 15 and a half, who was one of the front runners for Defensive Player of the Year for the majority of the season. He had his best season in his career. Joshua Uche also had his career best, 11 and a half sacks. Dietrich Wise finished third on the team with seven and a half sacks, which is also a career best for him. So three guys finish with career highs and sacks. It's not a coincidence that these guys were able to generate as much pressure as they were and able to be as successful as they were. A lot of their credit goes to them, obviously. Matt Judon has blossomed into one of the best young pass rushers, well, I guess not young, but one of the best pass rushers in football right now. And Joshua Uche is really coming into his own and he'll be entering a contract year in 2023. And if he's able to put together another season like he just did, he will get paid. This team really benefits from their front seven and the way that they're able to play. They're a very physical front seven. Everybody plays really good assignment football. And Lawrence Guy is no different there. At this point in his career, I don't know how much he's going to continue being a full-time starter for the team. He did play 14 games for the team this year, but he will be 33 years old in March. So another year older, and again, it's not like this is an elite player, but he's a very, very quality player. And the reason why I have him higher on this list than some of the other guys behind him is because he's one of those guys where his numbers are better than a box score shows. Two sacks, it's not a lot, but this isn't a guy that you're asking to get sacks. This is a guy that you're asking to help anchor his side of the defensive line, make life easier for everyone else. That's what he did at a very high level, I believe. Number three for me. Number two, we're actually staying with New England and going with another rookie in Jack Jones. Jack Jones looks like a potential starting corner for the Patriots. He played 13 games this year before winding the season down on injured reserve. In that time, he had 30 tackles, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, Two interceptions, including a pick six. That's pretty good, especially for being a fourth round rookie. He was able to get on the field very quickly because he showed that he has what it takes to be a starter for Bill Belichick. And it's not like Bill Belichick is just throwing guys out on the field. This is a guy who's selective about who he trusts. The secondary was going through a lot of changes too. So it's not like he owed Jack Jones anything. Like Jack Jones was probably going to get an opportunity, but that didn't mean that they were going to stick with Jones as a starter for as long as they did. And now going into 2023, there's the potential for him to remain one of the starting corners. Heck, he could be the number one corner, depending on what happens in free agency in the draft. He showed the stuff to be a relied upon defensive back for the Patriots. Again, there's going to be a lot of changes too. There's a chance that Jonathan Jones is gone, their number one corner, who's in his 30s now. There's a lot of younger pieces like Sean Wade, who have not developed. 
There's other defensive backs whose names are escaping me right now. There will be some guys in free agency. This is obviously a very good corner draft. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But based off of what Jack Jones was able to accomplish in 2022, you should feel pretty confident that he can continue taking those progressions, taking that next step forward, and becoming a consistent starter, potentially a lockdown guy. We'll see. I think that there's more upside for him to be a ball hawk than there is anything else. He did it a lot at Arizona State with a handful of interceptions and a handful of touchdowns. I think that he could continue to translate that to the pros. His two interceptions, one of them came in week one, I believe. And like it, it just it, it was very early in the season that he got his first interception, which I believe was his pick six. He clearly showed very early on that he is a guy who is completely capable of those big plays. I don't see a reason why he can't continue that ability. Based off of 2022, this guy looked really, really good moving forward. That's why he's my number two player for the top Arizona State Sun Devils from the 2022 season. If you're looking for a delicious treat and don't want the fat and calories, then you got to try a built bar. We just got through the holidays not that long ago, and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier. And if you're like me, and you don't want to compromise on taste, but you want to eat healthy, then you got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. They're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you. It's perfect for that New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bars so good? For starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate, and they come in unbelievably great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, and plenty more. I'm not sure how they do it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better is they're healthy. It's only 130 calories, just 4 grams of sugar, but a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around for a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. Or if you're closer to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You can thank me later. Get yourself a great-tasting protein bar and get yourself a Built Bar. One more time, thank you guys for tuning in. Wherever you're getting your podcasts, hit like and subscribe. Also, make sure that you check out Locked On College Basketball with experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton as they bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Hear from big-name experts, coaches, and players throughout the college basketball landscape. Locked on college basketball available on YouTube and wherever you're getting your podcasts. Number one player should not come as a surprise. It's it's the man who was a first round pick a handful of years ago. It's the man who has blossomed and turned into a legitimate number one receiver when he has been asked to take on that role. It's Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk has spent his first three seasons progressively getting better. There was a time where it felt like he was in the doghouse a little bit with Kyle Shanahan, who is very, very demanding of his players. And if you're not meeting those expectations, he's going to get on you. But Brandon Ayuk met those expectations and then some in the 2022 season. Posted career highs across the board, 78 catches, 1,015 yards, eight touchdowns. Can't ask for much more than that especially when you consider that the 49ers were in a pinch when they lost Debo Samuel earlier in the season to IR before he was able to return for the playoffs. What they were able to get in the meantime out of Brandon Ayuk was tremendous because where Debo only played 13 games and had 632 yards, Ayuk appeared in all 17 games and had over 1,000. He was, even when Debo was on the field, It felt like he was definitively the better receiver of the two. And that's not indicative moving forward. But this past season, it felt like Ayuk was the number one receiver there. And keep in mind that Brandon Ayuk was catching passes from three different quarterbacks during the regular season and then catching passes in the NFC Championship game from Josh Johnson. Speaking of the playoffs, that's the only thing that really held Brandon Ayuk back this year. He only had three catches for 36 yards in the playoffs. That's in three games. Got to be better than that. Hard to be better than that when you consider the quarterbacking situation that the team was going through. But nonetheless, great player step up is what it is. But looking at what he was able to do in the regular season 
man, it's hard not to think that this guy can't continue to get better and better and better and emerge as a big time playmaker for the 49ers, the way that he did this past year, the way that he has showed flashes of in previous years. It feels like the best is yet to come. The 49ers should absolutely pick up his fifth year option in order to prolong the eventual contract talks that will be coming full circle with Ayuk. But again, looking at his 2022 season, taking into context, playing with three different quarterbacks, having to step up as the number one receiver when Debo Samuel went down, not missing any time, easily the best Sun Devil from the 2023 or 2022 season, excuse me, one of the guys that I will be anticipating to make massive strides forward in 2023 and beyond. Number one Sun Devil in the NFL right now, but we'll see how these incoming rookies will do, which is something we'll be talking about later on in the week. So wherever you get your podcast, hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you get an update when we post new content. Stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter at RichieBrads36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Till next time, though, you keep it locked right here. Unlocked on Sunday.